back to this day one conversation with the Reverend Jeffrey Hoare, rector of All Saints Episcopal Church in Atlanta, Georgia, a parish he has served since 1998. Jeffrey, thanks again for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Last week we talked about some of the unique ministries of All Saints Episcopal Church, and today I want to ask about some of the work you are specifically involved in now. For one, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, recently appointed you to the Advisory Council for the Anglican Observer to the United Nations. Who is the Anglican Observer, and how do you, as one of the advisors, help? Well, the, the Anglican Observer is an office that is a, is a person who holds an office uh, in New York uh, that changes from time to time and is uh, an Anglican representative in the councils of the uh, world. Uh, the contrast might be with uh, the representative of the Vatican who is mm -hmm. seated because the Vatican is a state mm -hmm. and we are not. So it's a slightly different relationship. The advisory committee, of which I'm a new member, is primarily a fundraising group to support the work of that office, which I would characterize as providing a voice for the powerless among the powerful of the world. Mm. Uh, all too often, the, the powerless are not represented by the governments of their countries, and our observer can sometimes raise those issues. There are some programmatic uh, priorities uh, that she has, and learn more about the from the website by going to Anglican Observer and doing a search it will bring it up. And who is the Anglican Observer? Oh I should have said it's Helen Wangusa a, a very uh, widely respected lay woman from Uganda. You've also done a good bit of writing as a contributor to the first two volumes of Feasting on the Word which is a lectionary resource. Tell us about that resource and your involvement in it. Well it's an extraordinary resource the the main editors are Barbara Brown Taylor, who has appeared on this program from time to time. And, and formerly was on the staff of All Saints. And was formerly on the staff of All Saints. And uh, David Bartlett, who, uh, who, was, who is now at Columbia Seminary, but was formerly at Yale Divinity School. And they have a number of other editors and have invited a wide range of pastors and scholars to provide commentaries for preachers on the lectionary texts for any given Sunday or feast day. And so they ask people to write from the, the, a homiletic perspective, an exegetical perspective, a theological perspective, and a pastoral perspective. Did I get the right? Homiletical, exegetical, pastoral, and um, theological. And so there are four lessons on any given Sunday, Old Testament psalm, epistle, gospel, and with four perspectives. So there are 16 essays mm -hmm. available to the preacher from various different perspectives that somehow can be read in concert. Uh, and it's a, a great, great resource. There will eventually be 12 volumes and a wide, wide, wide range of, of, of talented contributors. You also write an online blog, and more and more clergy are doing that. What do you hope to communicate through your blog? Well, I started a blog initially when I took a sabbatical mm -hmm. uh, in 2005 as a means of um, staying in touch with the parish and letting them know what I was up to and and much of that sabbatical was shaped by tensions in the Anglican Communion and I was consciously in conversation about about that and after I returned a number of people asked me to to keep blogging and we talked about various ways in which we might do it and so I started again in late 2007 with, uh, with a blog that is largely my reflections on um, what's going on in the church and the world. Um, there's no particular schedule or rhythm mm -hmm. for it. It's, it's more I try and write once or twice a week. And it's intended to spark or create or bring about conversation within the congregation. Mm -hmm. Uh, from time to time, it's been picked up here or there, and I've given offence, which I try to do on a somewhat regular basis. And and uh, and other times, people have have written comments and had a conversation among themselves. But I would say, for the most part, the conversation does not take place online. Mm -hmm. Well, this past week on Ash Wednesday, the church entered into the season of Lent, and today we observe the first Sunday of Lent. How would you explain? 
purpose and practices of this holy season? Well, we're invited rather specifically in the Episcopal Church to the observance of a holy Lent, and we're enjoined to to uh, the reading and meditating on scripture and penitence, fasting, prayer, almsgiving. Um, it, it, there is an old joke that says Lent is the time when Episcopalians try and act like Christians <laughs> and do all the things we're supposed to do anyway. But, but I think overall uh, it, it's a way of engaging particular spiritual practice in which many, many people are interested and find helpful as a way of focusing uh, in a particular way on our lives as we prepare to make room for the resurrected Christ at Easter. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me.